We have main engine start. Four, three, two, one, and liftoff. Liftoff of the 25th Space Shuttle mission, and it has cleared the tower. Just a few months ago was the 28th anniversary of the Challenger explosion. Confirmed. Challenger now heading down range. I'm sure lots of you who are alive to see it still remember it as one of the saddest days in space exploration. Engines beginning throttling down now. And can remember exactly where you were when you saw it happen. 4% and many children across the globe watched as seven astronauts, Dick Scobie, Michael J. Smith, Ellison Onizuka, Judith Resnick, Ronald McNair, Gregory Jarvis, and Krista McAuliffe died right in front of their eyes. What the supposed to be celebration flight drastically changed into something that could have been avoided. The flight took place in freezing temperatures and wild winds, which is something that the spacecraft was not designed to handle. The people watching and the families whose loved ones lost their lives that day need answers of how these conditions changed their life forever and what exactly happened on the space shuttle Challenger. Obviously a major In January 1986, the weather on flight day was absolutely terrible. Cape Canaveral in Florida was experiencing high winds and temperatures of well below zero. It was the worst weather that any other space shuttle had to fly in. These conditions caused huge icicles to form on the launch pad and around the shuttle. This worried most engineers because they knew that the rubber O-ring seals on the segments of the solid rocket boosters couldn't stretch to fill the gaps and keep the seal. The engineers in charge of the solid rocket boosters have actually seen this seven times prior to this launch. During all these instances, the second backup seal prevented it from exploding. Since this issue has happened so many other times before, was the main reason that the head managers at NASA ignored the engineers' worries and pushed through to launch. With solid rocket boosters, you cannot throttle or shut them down after they are ignited. They also couldn't be jettisoned because they could run into the vehicle. During the launch on one of the side rocket boosters, the primary and secondary seal failed instantly and leaked out charred propellant, but everyone suspects that it was sealed up by aluminum oxide from the burnt propellant. This is what allowed the launch to continue for as long as it did, or else it would have been over, still at the pad. The final failure was said to be from the upper level wind shear. The upper level winds were recorded at just over 125 knots. The Challenger suffered the strongest wind shear ever recorded during a space shuttle launch. The wind speed isn't the direct reason for the disaster because the wind was still in the design limitations. The strong wind shear caused the shuttle to move off course which made the engine self-correct, putting even more stress onto the vehicle, which led to flexing in the side boosters. Inspectors believe that this flexing caused the aluminum oxide plug to break free and leak burning fuel outside of the booster. There was no way to abort the mission with those boosters still burning, and that is what sealed their fate. The leaking booster caused structural damage to the shuttle and the fuel tank, which led to the disaster. Although most people believe that the shuttle exploded, it didn't. It just disintegrated. There's no possible way to know whether the astronauts survived, but there is a fair amount of evidence proving that they were alive during their free fall down to the ocean below. On January 28th, 
1986, these seven astronauts gave their lives to better improve our space program. It is very important to always remember them and what happened during that January 28th. And the world will never forget the disastrous day as the Challenger disaster on January 28th.